COT's base of operations is right here at the Council of Time.com. COT has no other outlet or venue. These are other folks who will rebroadcast, like Daily Excellence, who is authorized to rebroadcast by way of video. This is a forecast. Never quite uh, did this before with you guys. But you should already know about the storm. Now, uh, next week, Wednesday and Thursday, has about a 82% probability that it will drench Florida again. As far as wind speeds and everything else, nobody knew it yet. There's a high-pressure system in the Midwest. It may not be enough to cause the storm to change its path. So right now, it looks like Wednesday or Thursday, you guys could get several inches of rain in Florida, just like the last hurricane. It could be a tropical storm, could be a hurricane, could be a tropical depression, uh, something of that nature. But you will probably, 82% chance you'll get something. All right? That's one forecast with the weather for Florida. Uh, what you may not know, I'm going to give you a different type of forecast. All of you know, or you should know, about Genesis 6. Correct? All of you should. Genesis 6. Genesis 6 had to deal with uh, some of the rebellious angels who took women on the earth. You've heard this story a million times. Right? All of you know about that. What you may not know about is the time limit threshold that they were given. That time limit is up. And we'll talk more about that, but that's part of the forecast. I'll say it again. That time limit is up. It's up. Now, the book of Enoch comes into play in this, and so do quite a few other texts. Now, we're not talking about these, um, the judgment day. No, not yet. A different type of storm is coming. It's on its way. And so you have... Well, I personally, I was... Um, I hope that everything in the government could set up uh, rather quickly. I do. I think they know what they are facing. I think they know that um, they can't afford any missteps in this one. Right? You guys live in the days where you're going to experience in the short term. When I say short term, I mean the super short term. You're going to start facing some irritations you've not faced before. When I say irritations, I mean things that will try you by way of your dreams. When you're awake, sleep, doesn't matter. But um, the world itself is about to be inundated with a few things, right? Things we're not used to. And while it may, it, it may seem a little off kilter right now, it is quite the, uh, well, it, it, it's something you really need to consider. Right? So this forecast, what I'm about to tell you, is, is quite obvious. That we all knew that someday we'd be dealing with uh, great opposition. Unconventional opposition. Right? Unconventional opposition. And I'm not talking about militaries and things like that, no. I'm talking about something else that's going to upend the war machine in a big way. Hmm? In a big way. I know that many people, right, uh, have never entertained this. But the, the sad part about it is this. It's already starting to happen to certain people. It's, it's starting to become intrusive already. It's almost like uh, nothing is waiting. Things are becoming quite bold. Right? Quite bold. And it's going to be a problem. Now, I would not... I'm not going to say they won't, but I wouldn't expect any authoritative or, or combined word on this because the subject is just too taboo. And it would, it would just unhinge too many people. But we know in the Bible at this, at, at, during the end days, not at the very end where the judgment is, but before Christ comes back, we know some things take place. We know that before Jesus comes back, right? 
uh, this world is going to be in a little bit of distress. This is before the return of Christ. In fact, I need Matthew 24 to help me with this, to put everything in context. And the reason why is because, listen, no one, no one in the right mind, whatever hope or wish uh, for, for some of the events that we speculate about, right? Nobody, nobody in the right mind would ever uh, hope for that. Well, hopefully they would not hope for that. Because in the Bible it says only a fool would ask for it, right? Nevertheless, we happen to be born in those days. And again, if a baby is born inside of a prison, and all they knew was the prison, they would not call it a prison. They would call it home. They would call it home. So I need Matthew to help me out with this. Christ gave us enough. He really did. Uh, I think it's a blessing. Things have not been disclosed too much. I really do. I think it's a blessing. And the reason why is because there's no way a person can function normally. With, you know, with a type of full disclosure. That's just not going to happen. That's, that is um, held within the hands of certain individuals and groups. And it's a good thing they separated that security clearance from governmental security clearance because right now, even the president, vice president, whoever, they don't have access to that. They have public security clearance. They're elected officials. They will, they, they to date, now it may not be that well. I don't believe anybody can change uh, that clearance uh, category. They, they can't do that. There are a few levels above what any president would ever have. Uh, there are groups for very good reason that have cut that off. Let me go to Matthew 24 if you guys want to join me there. I'm going to read this quickly. Um, of course, in Matthew 24, the disciples asked the Lord three specific questions. Three, right? He sat upon the Mount of Olives and the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? This is very important. What will be the sign of thy coming? What will be the sign of thy coming? Right? So they wanted to know what? When will these things happen? Number one. What's going to be the sign of your coming? Number two. And, and, and of the end of the world. What's going to be the end of the world? Now, remember the sign of thy coming. That means if a sign of his coming has not been given, he's not coming. There's a sign that precedes him. So let me continue. He said, Jesus answered and said unto them. Now, keep in mind, this was written 2,000 plus years ago. It was not written yesterday, 2,000 plus years ago. I know a lot of people like to put this off, and, and um, that's natural. But this was not written Yesterday, this was 2,000 plus years ago. And Jesus answered and said unto them, who is he speaking to? His disciples. His disciples sat with him on the Mount of Olives privately. So he's not talking to a large group. He's not telling this to a large group. He's telling this to his disciples privately. That's something else very important you have to remember. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now he's talking to his disciples privately. He's not talking to everybody else. He's talking to his disciples. He's very direct to his disciples. He says, And you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass. They must happen. That's why you're, listen, it, it's not, it doesn't mean sit back on your couch and relax. That's not what he's saying. He says, and you shall hear of wars, real wars where people die, right? Like the billions who have died in the past. And rumors of wars, more wars to come. You're going to hear of this. He said, see that you be not troubled. Don't have a mindset like these things are not supposed to happen. They are supposed to happen. They are supposed to happen. All right? So keep that in your mind. They are supposed to happen. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. They must take place. But the end is not yet. The end does not come with the wars. The wars will never cause the end. Are you starting to get it? The end is not yet. That is not the end of the world. Men fighting each other is not the end of the world. 
It must come to pass. Okay? You, you guys got that. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Well, all this stuff began 2,000 plus years ago. It did not begin in the last 500 years. It began 2,000 plus years ago. That was the beginning of sorrows. Okay? See, if a person is born like right now, they were not born in World War I or II, so they don't know about it. To them, the world is this playground. To those who endure the war, it is a horrific place full of injustice. You see the difference. You see it. So forget about the beginning of sorrows. That happened a long time ago, and it continues to this day. Okay, that it started 2,000 years ago. 2,000 plus years ago. It continues unto this day. But mankind's wars will never end the world. Something else will, not mankind. Okay? All right? Now, stay with me. All these are the beginning of sorrows, Matthew 24, 8. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Who is he talking to? His disciples. Jesus told those in Judea to flee into the mountains, not those in New York, not those in Texas, not those anywhere here. And indeed, they were taken up. They were. Just letting you know that. All right? Let's continue. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Now, let me put this in perspective. He says, for nation is going to rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Who's hated of all nations for his name's sake? A nation. If you're hated of all nations... For his name's sake, you're hated of all the nations. Listen, you shall be hated of all nations. So all the world is going to hate you for the name of Jesus. This is a buildup. A buildup for his name's sake. So all those who operate by his name are going to be hated of all nations. What does this begin? 2,000 plus years ago. It already started. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and hate one another. You know, in 70 AD, that's exactly what happened. When Israel was disbanded, it was dispersed, it was destroyed, it was split, blown to, you know, obliterated. That's what happened. They didn't get back together until 48, 1948. So let's continue. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. So collectively, we have had many. This, this word offend, and then shall many be offended. Many will stumble. Stumble. That word offended is stumbled. Why will they stumble? Why will they err as far as doctrine? That's why Jesus came to them privately, to give them the, 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 the compressed plan of the end days. And shall hate one another. Many shall be offended, shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Now, I want to put this in context. So, he says, when the beginning of sorrows began 2,000 plus years ago, they were going to deliver, he said, deliver you up to be afflicted. They did. To Caesar, they did. They delivered many up to be afflicted. And that never ended. Right? You guys remember Hitler. That's the same thing. They were delivered up to be afflicted. Same thing, so it continues. And he said, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Right now, there are many people who hate the Jews. They're gonna, they're, they have reared their ugly heads throughout this election. Throughout this entire election, you saw the true sentiment of people towards Christians. Let, let me clue you guys in on something of the hatred towards Christians you don't know about. Okay? Um, I read some things from school teachers, lots of school teachers. I often take an interest in what our kids are being taught and from whom. Openly, this is what was said. It is an abomination that the GOP is going to rule this nation. 
because they'll keep talking about Christ. Another one said, I hate that name, and I wish all of them would go hang themselves. And if they try to shove that junk down our kids' mouths, right, they'll do violent things. I'm not going to go any further. They hate Christ. This is what they said. They hate Christ, and to have that shoved down people's throats. People at this point in time, which is the future, should be able to be what they want to be. This is a true sentiment. And we're not talking about one or two people. Nope. Sorry. No. No. This is in your neighborhood, too. Your neighborhood. And it gets worse. So the fact is, you have a lot of people who hate Jesus. Do you know why? Don't try to figure that one out. But they do. And the schools have been fighting for your children for a long time. Not all teachers are bad. They're not. But the majority of them do not like Christ. They don't like his doctrine. They think Christianity ought to be abolished. They said it should not exist in the world we live in today. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. You don't. All this will be uncovered, and people will gasp with their mouths hung open in disgust. This is a true sentiment, which means hatred is building far more than you know. Hmm? Far more than you know. Let me continue. They deliver them up to be afflicted, right? They do, as they did in World War II, too, and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another and hate one another. That's already happening. It's building. It's a build-up. And many false prophets shall arise. That's been happening for a long time. Not to beat around the bush, there have been many who have stood before congregations who did not love the Lord. They simply did what they did because it was a business. They got rich. They eventually told people they didn't love them or they got caught in their affairs or whatever they got caught in. That was the end of them. Sure and simple. And then many shall be offended, shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Because, and because of iniquity shall abound, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's already happened. We talked about love last night. About the washing of the feet. To take that, the lowest position among humanity, to lay down your own personal royalty for the sake of somebody else. To raise them up, to wash them clean, to have them make it, taking no thought of oneself. You don't see that too much. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Now, because of this, you hear that. That's how we know it's continual. But he that endures, that means put up with. That does not mean those who dodge it. It doesn't mean those who run away from it. It means those who endure it, who take it. Yep, they keep their faith. They keep their belief in Christ. And they keep walking forward. That means, yes, you have been hurt. You're going to be hurt. See, there have been too many people, honestly. They have been thinking. That in their lifetime, all the hurt, the pain, the anguish, all that's going to be taken away. Let me ask you something. Has it been taken away? No. You're overcoming it. The hurt, the pain, the anguish, the opposition is still coming to you. But you've overcome it. See, every time you go through some situation, you overcome something. Until you get to the point where you are now. And those things that used to knock you down, they can't knock you down anymore. They still happen, but they have no effect. Do you see what's been happening? So when somebody brand new comes into the fold, they're going to go through what you went through, except it does not affect you, but it will affect them. Now you can lift them up because you have experience. Now do you see how things are working? Do you see? Earth is wants to never be a paradise throughout this process. Many people hoped it would, and they wanted Jesus to take it away. That's not what happened. The Lord has had you get a victory over all these things, which means to overcome it. It is of none effect to you. You see that? All right, let's continue. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Whoever does this, 
Whoever endures until the end, whoever does not give up, whoever does not faint, they're going to be saved. Why? Why? Because this is a promised process, a blessed process, not a cursed one, a blessed process. If it were not blessed, you would not be here. If it were to take you out, you would not be here. That would defeat the entire purpose. The purpose is that you get the victory over darkness, every level of darkness, as you continue to live your life. That's what the purpose is. Hmm? Hmm? That's why. That's why, that's why, that's why. Let me continue. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. It never said they had to believe. It said for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Now that was a summary. Now he's about to go into detail. That was a summary of everything. You just read it right here. You just read the progressive steps of this process. You just read who is blessed in this process. You just saw the end of this process. It's for you to get the victory, or it would not exist at all. All right, let's continue. It says, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. He's telling them to run. He's getting very specific. Mm -hmm. Very specific. Let him which is on the housetop not come down and take anything out of his house. Let me pause. You know what that means? Do not get stuck by materialism. You know in the movies where somebody says, Ooh, I gotta save my photo album, and they never come back. Somebody who says, Oh, I gotta go get my dog, and they never come back. Somebody who says, Oh, I gotta go, I gotta go get this lamp, and they never come back. Jesus, for the first time, is telling them to run. You know what that means? The only time the Messiah would ever say to run is if God says run. And God will only say run when he has declared something he will not repent of. You guessed it, the indignation of the Most High. These be the days of vengeance. He will not turn away from it until he is fulfilled, until he finishes what he declared so many thousands of years ago. Let him which is on, on the house top not go down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. You hear that? But woe unto them that are with child. Wait a minute. I thought the Lord was going to help everybody. These be the days of vengeance. This is the trial of trials. See, some of you, you don't realize how blessed you've been. You don't. That you're a Gentile. You have no idea. That you're not bound by this. You weren't born with that resistive thing in you that would cause you to not believe in Christ. They have to go through something. Because God declared it. He blinded them for a season. And he must do this before he restores their sight. Oh, but when they see, it's over. Do you hear me? It's over. Now, let me continue. But pray, pray ye that your flight not be in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Who is he talking to? He's talking to those who be in Judea. He's talking about their trip. He's talking about why he told them to run. So he says, don't go back to take anything out of your house. Pray that your flight not be in winter. Woe unto those. Better with child and to those who give suck in those days. If you have a little baby, woe unto you. He says, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall, nor ever shall be. It's going to be the worst time there ever was. Daniel chapter 12 is talking about that very time. You'll be here in the U.S. or wherever you are. This is the indignation that happens specifically in Israel. Nations come against Israel. All nations do not come against Texas. All nations do not come against India or China. All nations will come against Israel. <clears throat> and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. No flesh means no life.
There shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Remember when the Lord said, He's going to purge his vineyard? Hmm? Remember when he said, He's going to bring great trouble upon his land. God said this. He will bring great trouble upon his land. God said this. He will bring great trouble upon his land. That he will purge his vineyard. But he'll keep back a third. Remember that? And they will be washed. They will be purged. They will be made white. But there's going to be much murder and mayhem in that land. Better get ready for your eyes to see this. Because he has not come back yet. He's not come back. Not yet. He's telling you the steps within that summary he just gave you. And he has not come back yet. What do you think in the Bible it says? That day shall not come. Lest there come a falling way first. That man of perdition be revealed. The man of perdition must be revealed. He's the very one that sets up the abomination of desolation. He's the one that does it. Daniel chapter 11. We read that all the time. And arms shall stand on his part. And they collectively shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. And take away the daily sacrifice. You will see it. Now you're not going to be in Israel. You won't be there. Hmm? But you will see it. Hmm? You will see it. Let me continue. Then if, listen, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. The days are shortened by God's own mouth when he purges his own personal vineyard. He also said in another book, this is your homework, he said in another book that you would see it from a distance. You would see their suffering and in fact, he said the whole world will see their sufferings. That's when the scoffers come. Oh, where's your Lord now? That's when the scoffers come. Where's your Lord now? When they're in trouble, that's when the scoffers come to scoff. Where's your Lord now? Hmm? Where's your Lord now? Let's continue. Now remember, is this happening in New York City? No, the same way the Holocaust did not happen in New York City. It didn't happen in New York City. It didn't happen in Texas. No, nope, that's not where it happened. It didn't happen in the USA. No, that's not where it happened. Let me continue to read. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, don't believe it. Why would he say don't believe it? Because he's not here yet. If anybody says, here he is or there he is, don't believe it. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Now, wait a minute. See, a lot of people are looking for someone to show them, demonstrate who they are. Those would be the very ones that fall for the okie dokie. They're going to fall for it. Hook, line, and sinker. Why? Because they're not utilizing their internal confirmation. They're looking for external proof. And the only ones that will give that external proof and start working in the open like this are the false ones. And many will run to them. Anybody who's weak in the flesh is going to run to them. Or faith is going to run to them. Anybody weak in the faith is going to run to them. And God is allowing. He's doing this on purpose. He designed it. He designed it. He already told us to walk by faith. He already told us, do not walk by sight. He already told us to be obedient. But people, they still look for the proof. They still look for the proof. My goodness. Let's continue to read. Wherefore? If they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. He's giving you an example. Listen, he just said he's not going to be in secret chambers. He's not going to be in the desert. 
He just said, for as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west. He said, for as. Come on now, stay with me. He said, for as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What does that mean? Everybody will be able to recognize the coming of the Son of Man. Everybody will be able to recognize. Have you ever went somewhere and you haven't seen somebody in a while? And you see their specific gait. You ever see that? And you say, oh, that's so-and-so. I haven't seen them in a long time. Because you can recognize how they're walking. I mean, you will recognize your Lord and Savior when that happens. You will not make a mistake. No one will have to guess. Everybody on earth will see it. Nobody will make a mistake. It is a recognition built into you. The same way you can point at something and say, that's a dog. That's a cat. That's a giraffe. That's a hippopotamus. That same type recognition that no one ever taught you because you know of animals no one ever showed or taught you about. And that same way that people can recognize lightning from any location, so will you recognize the Son of Man. Remember also, he said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. Hmm? But the ones who go in the secret chambers, the ones who go in the desert, the little groups, they're falling for the okie dokie. He's, he's not coming back in secret. He's not coming back in some closet. He's not coming back just to one group of people. Every eye will see him. Isn't that what he said? Every eye will see him. All right, let's continue. Immediately. After the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened. Oh, oh, let me go back. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For his lightning, uh, for his lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For where, wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. You know, back in that day, an eagle was only a predator. Do you know that? It was a predator, bird of prey, a feared bird of prey. Do you know that? Do you know that? It was a bird of prey. Only in modern times have they taken an eagle and, and somewhat, you know, blew it up, lifted the thing up, made it majestic in a, in a representation of peace. It wasn't that in the old days. It would kill the sheep and everything else. It was a predator. It would take children. It was a predator. It was a predator. So wheresoever the carcass is, what's the carcass? What is that? What is, what is the carcass? What is he telling you about? He's telling you about Jerusalem again. He's doing it again. He's telling you about Jerusalem, specifically about Jerusalem. He just told us. That the worst time in history was taking place. He just told us that. He just told us those in Judea flee into the mountains. He just told us don't go back to take anything out of your houses. For the worst. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say about this day? How, how bad is this day? Oh, he said it was bad. For then shall be great tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to that time, no, no, nor ever shall be. It's going to be the worst time in history. You better believe it's going to be a lot of stuff there, right? For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Birds of prey. Surrounding Israel. Reveling over what they did. The beast and his armies. His multiple armies. Immediately after the tribulation, this is Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now, you can also read this in the book of Isaiah. The same thing. You can also read that in Revelation. When you have all those together, the sun being dark and the moon is not giving your light and the stars of heaven fall to earth. You can read all that in Revelation. They're primers. Actually, they're in six specific books. Primers. Right? And then...
shall appear the sign of the Son of Man of Heaven. There it is. Remember at the beginning they said, when are you coming back? What will be the sign of thy coming? They said, number two, the second question, what will be the sign of thy coming? Matthew twenty four thirty. he says, and then after the tribulation of those days, not before, but after, he said, and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Now, you ought to highlight that. All the tribes of the earth mourn. That's another primer. We've never gone over this in COT, but that's a primer. You would not believe how many times that's in the Bible. And it gives you a remarkable pinpoint something I can't discuss right now. But then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. You see that? You see it? So let's rehearse this. Let me pause right here. So when you back up, the worst time on the earth has already happened. The beast has already been on earth. But here he comes, as promised. You know how some people say, well, well, the Lord doesn't come back until the very end. That's not true. That's not true. That's not what the word of God says. Right? You know how a lot of people say, well, I'm not going to be here for this trouble. That's not biblical either. Though they may not be here because we're not promised tomorrow. There are a lot of Christians who are already gone. They're already with the Lord. How about that? Already with him. They beat us to the punch. We're the dodos left back here to finish our process. We're the ones that have to endure until the end, not the end of time, until the end of our race. You guys got that? To the end of your race. To the end of your race. There are billions of Christians who are already with the Lord. They're already made. They're already finished their race. We're the ones still here. We have to endure and continue. If it's in your heart. Well, you don't have to do it. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to do it. There is nothing in the heavens or in the earth that can cause me to reject the sacrifice given for me. I will not dishonor the Lord's sacrifice. I did enough of that. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Now, let me stop. Why would all the tribes of the earth mourn? Don't you know? Come on now. Don't you know? Somebody knows out there. All the, why would the tribes of the earth mourn? Why would all the tribes of the earth mourn? Or he did not say the tribes of Israel. He said the tribes of the earth would mourn. Why? Why would they mourn? You want to know? Maybe, maybe we have an answer. Oh, you guessed it. From the Bible. We have an answer. So let's find something here. Are you ready? You ready? You ready? And the heaven departed as a scroll when it scrolled together. And every mountain and island were moved to other places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? You see that? Those are the hard-headed ones, the ones who rejected the sacrifice, the ones who refused to walk by faith. And indeed they rejected Christ before men. They go hide themselves in the rocks, but one notable thing they said, they said, for the great day of his wrath has come. See, because listen, here in Matthew, we just read about the ultimate victory for those who have endured. But it's not the world's victory. It's the world's doom. Do you hear me? When they see him, they're going to know that they sided with the ones who pierced him. And just in case you're wondering where that was read from, that's Revelation chapter 6, starting at verse 15, or 14, starting at verse 14. That is the sixth seal. Isn't that something? I love the word of the Lord. I do love it. I do love it. I do love it. See, because they saw him coming. How else would they know the wrath of the Lamb was coming? Because they saw him too. Because every eye will see him. That's why our Creator's Son 
the word of the creator coming back, you better believe. We are engineered, built, born to recognize who our maker is. So no one can deny it when they see it. And sure enough, when they do see it, they go hide. They say his wrath is coming. But that's not what the faithful will say. See, because in the Old Testament, it specifically says, the faithful will say, they'll stand up and say, he is who we waited for. They can cut that short. Because in the, in the Hebrew, it's a, it's a much longer you know, sentence. That word waited, as it turns out, it means they occupied in the faith until it came. And when he comes, they'll stand up and point and say, he is who we waited for. That's why we endured until the end. Here's our victory. But the world can't say that. They're going to say, oh, shoot. Call up all the generals. Hide yourselves. <laughs> Hide yourselves. <laughs> That's what they'll say. They're going to run. And it's not going to work. They're going to entomb themselves, most of them. I mean, continue. It says, and he shall, now after this, it says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. They shall see it, you see? That's why they hide themselves. And it says, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. You know that silence in the heavens? Huh? You know about that silence in the heavens? See, I read something that says, let me see if I get this right. The four mighty angels who expelled the Nephilim will hold back both fires and winds that nothing stir upon the earth, nor day nor night. What does it say, nor day nor night? The, the, it mentioned the winds and the fire and everything stops. It stops until the tribes, the designated tribes, take flight. That's exactly what it says. Until the designated tribes take flight. So then all the four mighty angels, which includes Michael, the archangel Michael, right? Uriel, Gabriel, all those guys. They're going to hold back both fires and winds that nothing stir up on the earth. Not even day nor night. Nothing in flight will move, nothing, nothing moving on the ground will stir, nothing. The wind will not move, nothing will move until the designated tribes of the earth take flight. That's what it says. Satan hates that. He, he doesn't like it. He wants people to just have this grim picture of a Rambo uh, type thing going on. Right? That's what he wants. No, this is a process. This is you being born. That's the day of your birth if you're still here on this earth. And I'm convinced those who already made it, they will come with them. They'll come with them. Let me continue, though. It says, now, learn the parable of the fig tree. So he's going into detail on something else. He's giving us a timing. He's giving us a timing. Ready? He's giving us the timing. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. Somebody wrote that down. You know they stole that in 1998. Do you guys know that? You know where that came from? Little Light 70, you know where that came from? That came from the Middle East in 1998. Do you know that? That's where it came from. And something that almost started. World War III. Who would fight over some relics? Really? Anyway, let's continue. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer's nigh. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Listen, nobody before you could have seen all these things. Verily I say unto you, this is it. This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now I know that some people miss this. So listen to me carefully. He just said, learn the parable of the fig tree, the mystery of the fig tree. The fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer's now you know the process of a tree yielding fruit. So with that same process, 
So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, listen, here it is. This generation, why didn't he say that generation? Why did he say this generation? What is he talking about? The generation back then? No. Listen to me. This generation shall not pass and all these things be fulfilled. In the context of this reading, he just told something that will happen. And a generation will see it. The generation who sees all these things, that generation will not end until everything is fulfilled. Do you know who you are? Do you know what generation you're of? Hmm? Because he just said, he just said that that generation will not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Hmm? Somebody said, I'm sorry, I copied and pasted. Don't worry about it. I got the whole thing. I got the imagery. So, to learn the parable of the fig tree, when you start to see these things come to, you know what it says in another book, it says, when you begin to see these things come to pass, then look up and lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. And he says, he's marking the generation, the generation that sees these things. Whatever generation that is, that specific generation will not end until all things be fulfilled. Do you guys know how long this generation is? Anybody? Anybody know how long a generation is? I know a lot of people go to the numerical system in this. But something happened in the New Testament. Listen carefully, listen carefully. Listen carefully. A generation is the time it takes for a person to be born and have children. That's a generation. That's what a generation is. And you would notice by the count in the Old Testament and the count in the middle and some of the end books, the transitional books <clears throat> going into the new, the count of a generation alters. It is truly based on what I just told you. You have the means to go find out how long this is. Now, it still does not give you a precise anything, but it will tell you what season you're in. And it will let you know that this season, when it's up, everything is up. When this season is gone, everything is gone. And it just so happens you're born in that season. Why else do you think you were born with prophecy in you? Why else do you think you're drawn to revelation? You're not the, you know what? Those who came before us were terrified of revelation. They didn't want anything to do with revelation. Why is it that our generation, that's all we look at. We know it's coming. We, you know, we have no placement when the world is at peace. Why is it that most people are looking for absolute paradise and peace on the planet? But if it ever happened to us, if it ever happened to those who were called, right, us, we would have no placement. No placement whatsoever. Why do you think you were built with that in you? Can you deny that you don't have that in you? Hmm? Can you deny that you're not drawn to the book of Revelation, that you're not drawn to prophecies? That you're not a stickler for the end times events? See, everybody, when they started saying doom and gloom, that was Satan's attempt to try and put you out. That was his attempt to try and shut you up. And when that happened, let me tell you what you never told anybody. Can I do that? You didn't tell anybody this. You didn't write about this. I'm going to tell you anyway. You tried it. You tried to be like every other Christian out there. You tried it. You didn't tell anybody. Nobody knew what you were doing, but you tried to be just like them. And it did not work out for you. You felt dead inside, didn't you? Huh? How many almost just died inside? How many? How many? You tried to be like every other Christian, to go through the routines and all that. It wasn't working. You felt dead. You weren't alive. You didn't write about that one, did you? You didn't tell anybody that secret, did you? But that's what you did. You tried to emulate the church you saw. And you ended up almost losing yourself. You did. Because that's, nat that's not your natural calling. 
You're almost like rebels. You're, you can't let prophecy go. When everybody else forgets, you don't. When everybody else's mind is on something else, you're still thinking about it. When everybody else has let the New Testament go and let Revelation go and let the prophecies go, you're on them. You're always looking. You cannot help it. That's built into you. Hmm? That's built in. That's been since you were all, of, you know, since I was little, I did not see the world like everybody else did. I saw people saying, oh, it's going to be a beautiful place. You know what was going through my little head? They have no idea what they're talking about. I used to hear people say, oh, it's going to get better. And I was screaming inside, no, it isn't. It's going to get progressively worse and worse and worse and immoral. I said that at the age of six. I told my parents it's going to get immoral until everything collapses. Until everything is gone. Until everything is consumed. And then everything will be consumed. I was six years old when I said that. Because I never saw the world like anybody else. While everybody else was jumping around doing all that stuff, I said, what are they doing? They need to prepare. That's when I was young. This world has gotten progressively worse. I mean worse. I mean bitterly worse. And every time they say, well, it's going to get better now, it gets twice as bad. Mm -hmm. Let's continue because we're not done. We're not done yet. We got to go to, we have to continue to read that. Listen, listen, because now he's going to describe, he's answering everything. Now he's going to describe something. But of the day and hour knoweth no man. Notice he said the day or hour. He did not say season. Thank you, Lord. You didn't say season. He said day nor hour. You know how many people I've heard say, yeah, we can know the day. Somebody brought up a scripture one time. I heard people bring up the scripture and I just heard it. I didn't say anything because, they, you know, they're excited too. They're trying to get it too. But I heard somebody say, yeah, we can know the exact day. For what? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want to know the exact day. I don't want to know the exact hour. I do not. Because every time I know the exact day and hour brings a falsehood out of me. Do you know that? So that's why I don't want it. I don't want a date like everybody else. I do not want to get ready at the last minute like, I, like I'm squeaky clean. That's false. That's false. I want, to be, I want, to, I want it to come when I'm, when I'm in my average day. That's truth. I don't want it to come when I expect it because I can get ready for it. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I want it to catch me in my everyday life. So if I'm a hypocrite, I will never taint the heavens. How about that? I do not want to pollute that glorious place. I don't. So I don't want to know the day. I don't need to know the day nor the hour. I'll be prepared every single day of my life. And if I ever fail to, to prepare every single day of my life, then that's what I deserve. I deserve to be down there with the coals. So I don't want to know the day nor the hour. I don't need to know it because I'm ready right now. But of that day or hour nor no man, no not the angels in heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall all the, also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now let me pause real quick before everybody jumps to Zechariah's ascension. The Lord described, he gives us a context when he speaks, right? Have you noticed? He'll tell us something, and then he'll describe what he just said. He's good at that. So they documented this well. So let me tell it to you. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and given into marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, it's going to be business as usual. You got that? You see that? See, everybody's looking for a sign. They are. I heard Jesus say it's a wicked generation that seeks for a sign. That means you have to know by proof. Again, there's that proof thing. There's a proof thing. But he didn't mention anything here, but he described the days of Noah, how humanity was, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. He said they were buying and selling, marrying, giving into marriage. He didn't mention anything else. Why? Why? 
because the emphasis is here. He said, and, and knew not until the flood came. They knew nothing until the flood came. They did not know of their destruction until it actually came. That's what he's trying to get you to see, that the world will not, uh, the average person is not going to know of his or her destruction until the event comes to take them. See that? For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and given into marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So he gives us an emphasis that man is going to continue on his little facade and he's not going to know that the events are coming for him. Do you hear me? You won't, they won't know. In other words, it doesn't matter what comes to the earth. They're going to normalize it. It doesn't matter what transpires on the earth. They're going to normalize it, just like the weather. You remember, guys, in 2013 and 14, we were talking about the weather. And I said, when the days, when the weather turns and it gets real rough, they're going to normalize it. Just like in the days of Noah. I can almost imagine in the days of Noah, nobody saw rain. And all of a sudden, a raindrop hits and somebody says, what's that? Well, there's another one. I oh, don't worry about it. They got used to it. And they kept doing stuff, right? And then it then it really comes down. They say, oh, it's really coming down now. This never happened before. Don't worry about it. We'll go to higher ground. And then the water raises up. And they continue to go. Oh, don't worry about it. We're going to continue to go to higher ground. Right? Same thing, same thing, same thing. They continue to do it. They continue to normalize. All the volcanoes going off, earthquakes, everything happening in the world. Be careful. Don't let them normalize you and make you think that all this stuff is normal. Oh, it's normal, right? For little tiny children to change their gender. That's not normal. Oh, it's normal for people to watch nudity all over the place and just not even be offended. That's not normal. Or oh, it's normal for people to curse in their everyday language in the church. No, that's not normal. That's not normal. None of it's normal. Yet they normalize things, don't they? Satan is very good at that, to cause people to continue to accept abominations as a normal way of life. Hmm? It's not normal. It is not normal. People have been severely desensitized to righteousness to the point where they cannot see it. And now you know why it says, and they knew not till the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Hmm? It is not normal for all these kids to go missing. That's right, it's not. But people, where's the outcry of that? You know, I see people giving protests only when things interrupt their beer time, their liquor time, right? Their wallet or bank account. There are grotesque things happening on this planet. I mean grotesque. It is so grotesque. People used to ask me, Mike, why don't you... I was the person with no emotions. That's who I was. That's how you can always tell who knows things. They have bags under their eyes. They're not smiling. Everything is serious, and people always tell them to lighten up. You can't lighten up when you know about certain things in this world. I'm sorry, you cannot do it. That's why you better thank God he has not allowed you to see all of what you wanted to see, because you would not be able, you, would, you couldn't live a normal life. You couldn't. You couldn't. If you knew, just in America, if you knew about the starving people in America, there's no way you could smile. No way. Somebody asked me this, well, why don't you run for office? Because I would never smile. I would never, I would be twice as sick. Smile would be fake. I don't fake smile. I don't fake hug. I don't do anything like that fake. If I don't need it, I'm not going to do it. I won't. I won't even help a person if it's fake. Do you know that? If it's fake, I'm not doing it. I will not do it. Because you have a lot of that going on. You, you don't even know if a person is authentic in their love for you. You don't know that. Because of all the fakeness. You don't know that. 
You don't know. A smile at the Messiah's teaching. A smile at his correction. A smile at that gesture. All the sacrifice. That tops everything. But I'm full of joy. I'm not depressed. I'm not sad. I'm just somewhat serious. That's all. Listen. Listen. So they knew nothing until the plug came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now do you get it? The coming of the Son of Man, the atmosphere in the world, at the coming of the Son of Man will be just like that. They will normalize it. It's going to be business as usual. People are still going to get married. People are still going to buy and sell. See, a lot of people think there's going to be this big collapse. Right? Now listen, I'm going to know something here for you real quick. Before the coming of the Son of Man, Jesus just told us the world is going to continue as usual. Yet, he warned his own people. They're about to go through the worst time that ever was since there was a nation or would be again. Doesn't that tell you something? He warned Israel this time is really going to be on your heads. But the rest of the world because they're so immoral, they'll never see any indication that the Lord is coming. They will not know the seasons. They're going to be the ones that say, well, time has been like this since the beginning. And it's going to continue to be this way. No one's coming back. See, that's when Satan speaks, when you're depressed. That's when somebody calls you on the phone and says, well, why are you into that revelation stuff? No one's coming back. All of you have someone who spoke that in your ear. Those things have been in the Bible for a long time. What makes you think this is the moment? Nobody's coming back now. Things are going to continue like this. It's all this has happened before. Somebody has spoke, spoken that to each one of you. And when you heard it, it, you tried to play it off, but it did something to you, didn't it? You put an emptiness back in you. Why? Because Satan knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He knows what makes you empty. And he knows what can light your flame. He knows what he's doing. So you might want to know what you're doing. And the Bible says, be careful how you hear. In other words, be careful what you allow to enter into your heart. Everything you hear with your ears goes by way of the mind. If you meditate on it, it's going to trickle down to the heart. When it's in your heart, it's in you. And out of your mouth, stuff will flow. If your conversation is negative, you've taken in too much junk and it's not God's stuff. If you took in what your father said, you would never speak negative. But if you take in what the devil says and what he inspires to be said, you're going to always talk negative. You're going to be full of, you're going to be just like Doubted Thomas. When Jesus said, well, we're going back to Jerusalem, well, we might as well all go back and die. That was him. That was him. Just full of negativity. Yet the Lord tolerated him too. But out of the mouth, out of the mouth, right, comes the abundance of the heart. If your conversation is about negative junk all the time, stop feeding on negativity. You're going to stop feeding on negativity. Hmm? You got to back away from that. Because what it will do is become a disease in you. You won't even know it. And then you'll start spreading it to other people. You won't even know why people don't want to talk to you. You won't know. You'll say, well, I don't know what I did. Woe is me. You won't know that you're damaging people by your negativity. And it'll become a daily thing. A daily thing. You can change that. You can alter that. You can end that anytime you get ready. You just have to make up your mind to do it. Stop letting negativity enter in. I can hear anything, but you better believe not everything enters into my heart. I can hear everybody's story. I do not permit 
everything to enter into my heart. You hear me? I hear some pretty bad stories. The Lord taught me early to put things in context. There's some things you can handle, some things you cannot. When somebody throws something on you that you can't handle, you better tell yourself, nope, you can't handle this. It. It's not within your power. It's not yours. Don't sit up for 20 days worrying about it. It's not yours. You cannot keep it. You can't do anything about it. That's when you hand it off to Christ. He's whatever he assigned you to do, he's given you power to affect change in. If he's giving you no power to change something, it's not yours. Remember that. You'll be okay. Remember that. So when somebody comes to you with a sob story, but you have no power to do anything about it right there in that moment, give it to Christ. It's not yours. Don't let it enter into you and you fester on it and take responsibility over it. Don't do that. Don't do that because it's not yours. Sometimes people think Jesus has disappeared. You don't think the Lord knows about that? Because you know what you'll do? That's when people normally say, oh, I need you to pray quick. You can't come in here and demand that somebody pray quick and they don't know anything. Prayer comes from truth. Truth. You don't come in an emergency. Oh, pray quick, trying to direct everybody. And no, that's not sincere. The person doesn't even know what's going on. You don't know if they care or not. I'll tell you something. When I found out Jesus prays for me, that's who I need praying for me. My intercessor. Is he not the intercessor between us and God? Yes, he is. You didn't even know it. But your Lord and Savior is praying for you right now. He has a standing prayer over your life. You're going to tell me that somebody here on earth, their puny prayer is better than his? I don't think so. Don't get upset when somebody won't pray for you. Just understand that your Messiah has already prayed for you and the situation nobody knows about but you and the ones you know about. See, because when people say, oh, you pray for me, and then they get mad because they won't, all you're doing is venting. You're just expressing darkness to everybody. So when you're crisis, you can become darkness itself because you begin to blame people. I've seen this happen too many times. That's why at funerals, people end up fighting. Bitter. I mean, it's just awful. Awful. Nothing that we invite Christ into should have any type of darkness in it. Darkness and light have no fellowship one to another. And the Lord certainly has no fellowship with darkness. So darkness cannot exist in the presence of the Lord. So that means we are the ones in error. We've got to learn to fix these things. To honor the Messiah. To invite his presence for real. Not throw a show on and then get angry because that means his presence was not there. There's only peace in the presence of the Messiah. Only repair. Only healing. Men I know for sure. Satan is the one that will have you walking on eggshells. And I don't do eggshells. I'll stomp on every single one. I don't do that. And I won't cultivate an environment like that either. Satan is sneaky, and when we get in a weak moment, he will use us. He will. He will. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. All right. Now, when I come back from this break, I'm going to continue reading this going into 25, maybe. But you guys get the gist of it. Because right now, you're in the middle of a season. You may not comprehend all the way. I'll be back in a few minutes right here at the Council of Time. Let us continue. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it, shall we? All right. So where we where we leave off? Okay. So they knew nothing till the book came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. One will be taking the other left. Now notice how he did this. Hmm? He just told us 
about the days of Noah. Follow me on this. He told us that the season, when he comes back, the world's going to be doing business as usual, right? But then he said, when that time comes, right? Then shall two be in the field. One will be taking the other left. Why would he say then? Why would that say then? It's giving you an order to something. It's giving you an order, right? Listen, because what did we just see? We just saw. He just told us about the coming of the Son of Man. He just told us that everybody's going to see him. He just told us. And he just told us when the season was. It'll be like as in the days of Noah. When they were buying, selling, marrying, giving into marriage until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. He just told us about that. Then he's then after all that, right? After that, after you see the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the sound of a great trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one, heaven, one end of heaven to the other. And then he tells us, the generation that sees all these things, that generation will not pass and all these things be fulfilled. He says, but of the day or hour knoweth no man, not the angels in heaven, only my father, right? Then he goes into this days of knowing. He says, so no one knows the day nor the hour. He says, but, but. Just like the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. They knew nothing until the flood came. You, you know what that means, too. If they knew nothing until the flood came, they didn't want to hear anything about Christ. Oh, here we go. We're in this time right now. They didn't want to hear about the end of days. The world does not want to hear about Jesus Christ. They didn't want to hear about it. So they didn't know anything. He says, and in that time, so you'll see the sign, the Son of Man coming in the clouds. I'm trying to emphasize this. Then the tribes of the earth are going to mourn. After all that, then he says, shall two be in the field, one will be taking the other left. Huh? That just clears up something for you. That clears up something for you. See, a lot of people say, well, you know, uh... You know that scripture where it says we're going to meet him in the air forever be with the Lord? He's telling you the same thing. He says, then shall two be in the field, one will be taking the other left. Then two women shall be grinding at the mill, one will be taking the other left. Watch, therefore. Watch, therefore. For ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. You don't know the day nor the hour, but you know the season. What's the season like? Israel. They're going to have problems. The world is not going to know anything. They're not going to believe it. They're not going to pay attention to it. They're going to ignore it. They're going to normalize a wicked, gross, immoral society. Lord have mercy. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, and if the good man of a house had known what watch, what, in what watch, the thief would have come, he would have watched, and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Who is the thief? Jesus is the thief. If the good man of a house would have known in what hour, huh? in what hour, he says, or in what watch the thief would have come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house be broken up. He just told you to watch. So he's giving an emphasis. You are the good man of that house. You're to be on your P's and Q's because you're in that time. That's why he said watch. He would have never said watch if you were never going to be in those times. But he said watch. You know what watch means? If you're watching for a thief to come, you're prepared for a thief to come. You're also prepared to handle the thief. In this case, Jesus is the thief. He's coming in an hour we don't know of, just like a thief. A thief does not come by your calendar. A thief is not going to call you up and say, I'm going to be there, 9 o'clock, you know, midnight, on the 12th. That's, no. A thief will specifically try to get there when you don't know he's coming in the first place. So the Lord says, watch. 
He said, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord does come. But know this, that if the good man of a house had known in what watch the thief would have come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house, his house to be broken up or robbed. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Why does he keep saying we're not thinking of the right hour? I'll tell you why. He gave a lesson one time, and he told us how our minds work. How the seed of the word of God is taken out of our minds. And he mentioned the riches of this life, the cares of this world. That's what he did. When you're wrapped up in world affairs, when you're wrapped up in your day-to-day -day life, sometimes you're not thinking about this at all. You're preoccupied. When people have problems, when things are going on and this, that, and the other, you're not thinking about the word of God. When fights break out or pressure is too high, you're not thinking about the word of God. So he's saying to you, watch Watch. And I'll say it again. If you're watching for a thief, you're ready to handle the thief. So if you're watching, he's, he just said it. He said, therefore, be ye also ready. Be ready. Now, some, that's curious. Because listen to me. You can prepare for anything. But you don't know if you're going to be ready or not. In this case, he's telling you to be ready. Oh boy, he took it a step further. He's telling you to be ready. That means you're going to need every moment on earth that you have. Every day you're on this earth, every hour of every day is needful for you and I. If it were not needful, we wouldn't be here. Do you hear me? See, if we finish our race, we've completed everything, and we're already gone before this ever takes place. Him telling us to be ye ready, be ready? Oh my, he's telling us we need every moment in life. Hear me. We can't waste a moment that we're given. Certainly not foolishness. Not in bickering. Not in any of those things that normally get people caught up. Or they start and get overly involved in something else. And they start, well, if you're not watching, you're doing something else. Here it is. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is that faithful and wise servant? I hope that's me for my household. Who then is that faithful and wise servant whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. So that's being ready. Did you catch that? Giving meat in due season. Somebody said explain verse, verse 40. He just did. He said, then shall two be in the field, the one will be taking the other left, two will be at the mill, the one will be taking the other left. That segues off the scripture when the Lord says when he comes, you're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. You're going to see him, then you're going to be changed. Same thing in Daniel chapter 12. When Michael stands up, the prince withstands for the children of Israel, then the dead shall rise first. And those who are alive will shine with the brightness of the firmament, right? They're, they're, they're gonna, the dead will rise, some to everlasting life, some to everlasting contempt. But those who are alive, right? Those that are wise or those who had the gospel, those who believe, those who kept the faith, they're going to shine with the brightness of the firmament. They're going to be forever changed. And all through, you hear this mentioned all throughout the word of God. That's what that means. So he's just giving you yet another explanation of that one. Hmm? Another. Let's continue to read. Let's continue to read. Therefore, be also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is that faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. In other words, he, 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 you don't want him to come, and you're relaxing, doing nothing, your mind blank, checking out a movie. You, you, you guys see what I'm saying? 
See, people try to make it okay. Like, it's okay not to think about the Lord and go and just, you know, do something. No! Christianity is your citizenship in the kingdom. You know what that means? If Christ is in your heart, you're always about your father's business. And what is the father's business in this detrimental time? It is the salvation of souls. It is the encouragement to the saints. Hmm? Hmm? You're about your father's business. Let's continue. So, he says, Verily I say unto you, that one that's blessed whom his Lord, when he cometh shall find so doing, doing what? Giving meat in due season. Right? That, that one. He said, Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. That's an inheritance. Join ears with Christ. Let's continue. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. Now this is so hard for people to get sometimes. Do you remember when I told you that someone whispered in your ear that the time is far off, it's not coming, things have been going on like this from the beginning? That's a prophecy, by the way. We see the contrast of two types of servant. A good servant and an evil servant. Now, the good servant is watching and is ready. The evil servant, follow me on this, but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. So that means an evil servant in his heart does not believe the Lord is coming anytime soon. Now let me share this with you. When you were prosperous in the world, when you had your thing in the world, you were in no rush for the Lord to come. It's only when your world fell apart and the pressure came, you said, Lord, come quickly. Now, some of us have equaled out. We don't need the pressure of the world to put us in that mindset. So no matter how good the world is, we'll always say, Lord, come quickly. In other words, we're ready because we're in servitude. But every day that we're given, we're thankful. So you'll never hear certain people like me, you'll never hear me say, I'm done, I'm ready to go right now. I'll keep that in my thoughts. I won't say it out loud. My point is, when you're about your father's business, you're grateful for the time he's given you to do his work. But you know he's coming one day and he will take you. And that's fine too. So whether you be on earth or be in heaven, you still get to serve the Lord or be with the Lord. You see that? When we start saying, listen, this is why some of you don't like me for this statement. Because I asked one day, I said, how many are tired? Many, oh, I'm tired. You're tired because you didn't get your way. See, when a person is tired, they're done with servitude. Do you hear me? They're done with the job. A person is tired when they don't want to work anymore. But I told you something else, didn't I? I said that people were tired because they didn't get their way in life. Because it wasn't working out the way they wanted it to. And I gave them a key. Stop living life. Stop living life to cause it to be what you want it to be. And live your life unto the most high. That way you're taking no thought about tomorrow. And you'll say whatever comes, comes. But I'm in servitude to the Lord until he takes me home. And even then, I might try to serve him. Because I'll tell you now, he'll have to fire me. Lord, don't fire me. Don't do that. You guys see my point? I, I'm so passionate about that because that's a very dangerous statement. To say that you're tired means you're done. Anybody who's ever been employed, we know what that statement, I'm tired, means. We know what that means, don't we? And all of us have said it. All of us have said, oh, I just wish the Lord would come. I, listen, I've repented one time because I said that too. I said, Lord, why am I here? I, I will never in life ever say that again. Nope. 
You can, nope. He gave me a year-long answer. You don't want that. You don't want it. You do not want that. A year-long answer. Nope. You don't want that. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. You don't want that. You don't want that. Your father, listen, because some people have it messed up. See, let me, let me get to something else. Thank you, Lord. Some people believe that things are not supposed to be like this. Oh, I'm standing up now. See, you made me stand up. I might break something. Some people believe that somehow life is not supposed to be this way. You're wrong. See, that's where you're wrong. If you're believing life should be some peaceful something or it's not the right way, of course you're going to get tired. You're going to think something is broken in the world. Nothing is broken in the world. This is your father's design. Let me remind you of something. In the Old Testament, and go look it up, God said, I created the good and the evil. Uh-oh. What? God created the good and the evil? He didn't say Evil came about because, nope, that's not what he said. He said, I created the good and the evil. He set this whole thing up. See, in some of you in your minds are saying, why would God just have me be abused like this in the world? The correction. You have not been touched. What your body has. You will be fully delivered as though you were never touched by anything. And nothing will be on your soul damaging at all. And your flesh will be left back here or it's going to be changed. Either way, you're not going to have your flesh. What you go through here is for here. It's a test of integrity and honesty. It is the truth of your answer. If God were to ask me in the beginning, Michael, do you love me? Sure, I'd say, yeah. If the devil, if he asked Lucifer, do you love me? The Lucifer would say, yeah. But as soon, as soon as he introduced free will, other beings and everything else, Ah, that changed everything. See, if we were direct from God, everybody would be good. Why? Because nothing is proven of us. As soon as we get to a place where we can actually do things, let me tell you what's been happening. He never stopped asking, do you love me? Think about this. You go to work or you entertain your guests or whatever you do, and something breaks out. Can you imagine God saying, is this person's tone to you enough to cause you to go against my holiness? And then you know about the Lord and you start cursing anyway. Yep, it's enough to cause you to fall away. Uh-oh, phone call comes in. Is this phone call and intimidation enough to cause you to fall away? And then you lie, yep. It's enough to make you fall away. But see, over time, it's been changing, hasn't it? See, in the beginning, we fell away over the minor things, over small things. We got jealous that somebody else got promoted, didn't we? We lied when the pressure came. We tried to get ourselves out of trouble. We would save our own lives and allow everybody to die and cry at the same time like it was, you know, just one of those things. But through life... We started to see something. We started to see what evil was. And it was fully manifest. We said, uh-uh, I want no part of this. That's what we started to say. Why? Because now if God were to say, is this conversation enough to get you to fall away? You say, no, absolutely not. Is this threat enough to get you to renounce me? No, absolutely not. But you weren't like that in the beginning. You're being tried every single day. And every single day you're given an answer. You don't want, who would want to go to the kingdom of God incomplete and be just like Lucifer, where some small thing would cause you to sin and to fall away? God doesn't want you to fall away. 
You're being tried by everything here. Haven't you noticed? Anything that can cause you to fall away has come into your life. Haven't you noticed? And each one of us is different. So we're going to have different circumstances. And we're giving our answer by how we live, not how we talk. Something else is happening, too. How would the evil be evil? God created the good and the evil. So how would he separate for all time all evil? Evil would say, I haven't done anything. So here you come. God sends you here out of his own spirit. You get here on this earth. And guess what evil tries to do? It's coming straight to you. Exhibit A. You're the one in the world that evil targeted. You're the witness against the darkness. That's what you are. Haven't you noticed in the New Testament God promised us trials and tribulations? He said, don't think it's strange when fiery trials come upon you. That's what an apostle said. Remember? Because he understood. I mean, they knew what was happening here. Why do you think encouragement came, but nobody has been taken out of it yet unless they finish their race, unless they finish their process? Think about it. Hmm? No, no, what God is doing is doing for real. He does not want robots. He wants children that actually choose him. Not robots. Children that choose his way. To choose the living God is to choose his way. We didn't choose his way in the beginning. We learned to choose his way. Huh? Now when we go through something, we say, no, I'm not doing it the dark way. I'm choosing my father's way. We're honoring him. And when we fall, we eventually get it together because we recognize evil and we say no more. And guess who's there to forgive us of that thing? Jesus is. When we want to do right, we always have sin over us. The Lord sent his son to wash it away that you could be clean when you step forward into honesty with him. No father wants a child that automatically does everything he says. A father wants a child that chooses to do what he says. If a child chooses, if I'm a child's father and they choose my way over everybody else's way, I'll say, that's my son. That's my daughter. See how that works? But if that same child chooses the neighbor's way, Oh, reform school, military school, some kind of school. This child is rebellious. They're no child of mine. Hmm? All of you have been through it to some degree. You have had someone in your life that you loved that did not choose your way, did not believe your statement. They went to somebody else. How about you men out there who poured out your heart to someone, yet... They embraced someone else. Hmm? You and, and you ladies who broke your back, you changed yourself for someone who chose somebody else. You know what it is to be rejected. Well, let me share this with you. Every time we choose darkness, that's the rejection we give our Father in heaven. And when you find that out, you have no desire to join with any darkness anymore. So sin is no longer a rival. It is not. There will come a time. You continue this walk, you'll overcome all sin. That you will. You know why? Because you'll never choose it, never agree with it, never walk towards it, never hold it. You'll simply say no. Because you'll have an understanding of where you are and who you are. And most importantly, who your father is and how much he loves you and how he sees you. That's when sin's back is broken. Hmm? Anyway, 
at the beginning before I went off on that tangent. That's why saying I'm tired is no good. Hopefully you see that. Hopefully. Let's continue. But and if that evil servant, now remember, this is the one that's not watching. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants. Isn't that something? Anybody who says the Lord has delayed his coming, they always end up hurting their fellow servants, doing something against their fellow servants. In other words, if any of us were to ever say the Lord's not coming back anytime soon, we're either depressed, defeated, something's going on, we're just not in the right placement yet. And, and that's one of the first things that happens. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord, delay is his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkard. Who is the drunk? Who is the drunk person? Huh? Those who sleep in the night, that's in another section, but we're not of the night that we would sleep in the night. Those who sleep in the night, that means sin. We're children of the day, not of the night. Just so you know that. But they eat and drink with the drunkard. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, in an hour that he is not aware of. Well, obviously, because when a person says the Lord has delayed his coming, he's not aware of the season. He's simply not aware. So the Lord will come in an hour that he's not aware of. And shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Even if I, if I were to ever say, well, the Lord's not coming until, you know, another thousand years or something, it's because of a very few reasons. Mostly because something may be working out for me in the world, and I choose that over servitude. And I say, well, you know, I did the COT thing, but a better opportunity. See ya, right? That's the evil servant. Isn't it funny, too, when there was a time I entertained that thought partially. No, I entertained that thought. I said, well, the Lord may not come back till a thousand years. And I felt wrong saying it. That's the funny part. I felt convicted saying it, but I said it anyway. And I was talking to me. But I said that because everybody knows that when you're young and you're thinking about Christianity, when you're not ready to get into the fold, something happens. You start running away from ministers. You start shutting Bibles, like your Bible has eyeballs that can see you right before you do your thing, right? I know some of y'all looking at me like you never did that, but you did. Some of you, you try to get away from anything that looked like a Bible, like it had eyeballs. How many of you shut your Bible? So we couldn't see what you were doing. Come on now. Come on. I've seen people do that. I've seen a person burn up his pants. A, a pastor came around. He put that cigarette in his pocket so quick and it was still lit. Well, you know what happens when it touches material. That didn't work out so good. Right? See, there you go. Some people, they thought their Bible had eyeballs. And you all see this, so you see this about the seasons. I said I was going to 25. I, I can't believe this, but I don't have time. I don't have time yet. We'll have to do that another time, 25. But you all see this season. Do you see this season and how easily? But first of all, first of all, there are known elements in this season that will come to you and make you try to make you think it's not the season. You cannot know the day nor the hour because you don't need to know the day nor the hour. But you know the season. You know the season. And how many echoes does God have to give? How many foreshadowings does he have to give? Hmm? <sighs> Somebody says, can you update us about space events? We'll do that. 
updates on a binary system? Yeah, I have a special way I'm going to update you guys on that. Oh, well. But I will tell you something. The world is going to be dealing with other elements. And that's also mentioned in the Bible. Not quite the way everybody else mentions it. See, you guys remember that artifact I was telling you about? That they would show the world? That would start to change the faith of many. That hour is sooner, and that hour is right around the corner. It really is right around the corner. And I'm telling you right now, it's going to mess with you and everybody you know. The only true preparation you have, you got to dig deep in your faith. You really have to dig deep. You got to make a commitment. But only you can do it. Listen, only you can do that. You have to decide if the Messiah is your Messiah. If the living God is your living God, the God of Isaac and Abraham and Jacob and Jesus, is he your father? You have Only you can decide that. You can't be forced to do it or coerced to do it. It's something you're going to have to choose. Now, you were born with a belief. So there is a promised seal to you, if you'll accept it. You're marked to complete this race and to be a child of the most time, but you must accept it. It will not be thrust upon you. It's something you have to choose. Nobody can make you choose it. It's something you'll have to choose for you. I would say consider it deeply. See, when certain hours come upon this earth, it's going to be all but impossible to turn anybody away from certain things. And when I say impossible, I mean impossible. Do you hear me? A final commitment is coming for all humanity. They will have already chosen one or the other. And there will not be another choice humanity will make. And it's coming at a time people are not aware of. It's coming sooner than any of us would like. It's out of season with anything you ever heard. We're talking about something physical all over this earth. And there's no way to prepare anybody except to say. Well, the ancient things will come back. But those who have chosen Christ will have chosen him. Will have accepted him. And will have took a step in their life as a commitment to him. In other words, you'll live by your choice. And if you have not started to live by your choice, it is time to live by your choice. If you made a choice for Christ, live by it. Don't fight with it. Just choose him. And everything you do, choose him. Begin to recognize the choices before you. The Lord said, I set before you life and death, darkness and light. I hope your choice is holiness. I hope your choice is light. I hope your choice is him. Most importantly, I hope that you can recognize it. Now listen, if you can't recognize it, then we here at COT have an extra work to do just for you. It is important that you recognize these things. That's where the work is. When somebody doesn't see it, we have to go to work. The work is for you. So that you can see it. For there's no ambiguity, only clarity. We'll do what we must to present that to you. But you still have to make the choice yourself. We cannot choose for you. 
that an emulated choice will be easily overturned by what will be unleashed. Please consider it. Please. We're so incredibly close to a point of no return. All the days of folly and everything else it's going to come to an abrupt halt. That's my hope for you. So listen, let us know. Let somebody know. Because we have to get this right. We have to get this right. Listen, I'm going to say God bless all of you. If I happen to come on at midnight, but I have more to say. Okay, I have more to say. But for now, I'm going to let you guys go. For the moment, I'll be back tomorrow, and and don't don't be shocked if you guys see extra audios pop up uh, from here on out. Okay, there are lots of things happening, and uh, you will be duly informed as best I can. Okay, not in every subject, but in those subjects I'm called to inform you about, I'll inform you. All right. God bless each and every one of you. Continue to pray for CRT that we can keep. We're, we're, we have to punch through some brick walls. Big ones. But I believe we can do it. Right? Listen, like the, the Lord is good at this. But uh, just so you guys know, do you do? You do know. He will put any organization like this, he puts it in the hands of you. He'll always do that for humility's sake. There'll be no way a place can say they're better than the people. He said that in the Old Testament. So he places the place in the people's hands. Remember that. Please remember that. And no pride here. None of that stuff. But that's how it works. Right? So the day you no longer need us is the day we'll no longer be here. All right? That's how, that's how it works. That's how it works. With that, I'm going to say God bless each of you. We have a work to be done. And I hope that you guys will also critique me, right? Because if you're not getting something, you got to let me know. Now, I know everybody has a critique, and I'll go through there with, with honesty. But I need to communicate somehow everything that needs to be communicated clearly. If you don't understand something, let somebody know. Please let somebody know, all right? So I can adjust things. So you can know. God bless and keep all of you. We'll see you guys next time right here at the Council of Time. God bless.